Hey, welcome back to Sling K for 548 hours. So here's something that uh, is going to slow us down just a little tiny bit. Um, hadn't noticed it before, but I'm just putting the engine mount back on in the background with um, some of the associated hardware on the firewall and just connecting things up. And I noticed a big issue. I was down here connecting up the uh, push rods for the steering for the nose gear. And I noticed that in here, the push rods were scraping on the bottom of the firewall, which didn't seem right to me. And then I had another look up here. And that is obviously not supposed to look like that. And there's supposed to be a yellow spacer in there that holds this thing up like this. And then I don't get the scraping of that. So clearly when it was shipped, the airplane must have had the nose gear tied down to the bed of the truck. It's taken a hiding and it's loaded the back up so it's pulled it's pulled this the whole frame and everything up from the nose gear which was attached to the truck so it's broken the space of it's in here which is obviously um, I haven't seen one before but I guess it's plastic and you can see that as it's split it's rocked out to the sides and it's bent this upper plate so that's taken a bit of a hiding anyhow I guess we'll have to see if we can get onto sling um, and try and get some parts out of them Ar, 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 ar. That's me trying to be funny, I think. Oh, this damn speaker. Um, it's probably going to get me cut off from um, YouTube from a copyright strike. Anyhow, um, in the meantime, hopefully we'll get this bit through. So I'm just in the process of cutting this pipe, um, which came on the engine, which had the pressure valve here into the throttle body. Um, it was a, like a 90 degree thing and it gives you ridiculous measurements on this pipe based on what uh, Sling had just done on the CAD and I mean there's no way you could measure it to 0.1 of a millimetre for a start um, like that, it's ridiculous and not only that, is that this is only the CAD representation of the shape of the actual pipe um, so it really just pays to have a, a wee look and try and figure out what it is we're actually trying to achieve and it's pretty obvious rather than having this, this thing sitting out here we're trying to get it in line with the throttle body, but this direction, get it level. So that, that's the guts of it. So the easiest way to cut this thing, particularly if you've got an iPad or something similar, is just zoom in to what it is you're trying to achieve, hold that up to it until you get the, about the right shape. That's what we're trying to do in here. Um, once you've done that, it's a piece of cake. So there it is. It's, um, Pretty straightforward kind of thing. It's just once you figure out what it is you're actually trying to achieve, it makes it a lot easier rather than trying to figure out some sort of weird to within 0.1 of a millimetre tolerance cut, which uh, which is just not going to happen. Anyway, pretty straightforward. There you go. And here's a quick little bit of video for my model airplaning friends. Um, we all know that in a model airplane you need to have some offset built into your engine um, for the thrust for the rotation of the propeller, well a big aeroplane's no different. You can see the engine mount here is definitely not in centre and it's pointing off in exactly the same way as you'd expect a model aeroplane to be. Again looking down from the top you can see the thrust is off to the right. Well we got the nose gear fork and the spat attaching brackets for the Behringer nose wheel so that's all on now. So I can take that horrible box out that was stopping the thing tipping over on the front and now it can actually sit on its nose leg which is great. Not putting the, the wheels in just yet because the thing's too high to work in to get over the, the top of here. This is just a nice height for me so I can get over the top. Um, so at the moment that's how it's going to be but uh, we're all set to go. I've got the lower engine mount bolts in um, and we're just waiting for Glenn to go and pick up the crane. And that thing will hopefully go onto there. So there's today's little exercise there. And uh, the helpers down the end there, we're having a, a bit like a roof party, but it's an engine party. Okay, well, big day yesterday putting the engine on. And I thought it would be a good time just to bring up a couple of little um, points and perhaps tips just for anybody who is heading out in that direction.
So the first thing of interest is this thing. Um, and I've seen people have endless trouble with these. Um, this is the captured nut that's on the um, shipping cradle, I guess you call it, on the lower right hand edge mount. Um, people overthinking it, I've seen people pulling the turbo off and all sorts of things to get to the, the rivet that holds this thing on. But guys, that rivet is a rivet without the mandrel. If you look at it, it hasn't been drawn and it doesn't have the mandrel on it, so it's just soft aluminium or aluminum, depending on which side you butter your toast on. Um, so all you need to do is that when the engine's on the crane, you undo the four bolts, this thing needs just flops around. And I think probably the easiest way, if you had a, a small woodworking chisel, is to just stick it down between this bracket and the turbocharger mount, a quick tap, and that would just shear right off. I didn't have that, so I just used a screwdriver. Same thing, a couple of taps, gone. So really, that thing is is no problem at all, and it's really soft metal as well. It's just, but it's so simple to get out. It seriously a five second job. So the next thing is, before you even think about putting the engine on the crane, get these rubber isolators, the steel cups, and the um, the spacer sleeve that goes inside it. Get them in the right order, of course. So the hard ones go on the back, on the top, and on the bottom, on the front, and. Place them in here and get a C-clamp or something and squeeze them together and push them into the frame. By doing that, it will mean that the nut will have the sorry, the bolt will be long enough in order to get a nut on. If you don't do that, it's quite a bit fatter and you won't be able to get the nut on. So if you just do that before you even get the engine near it, it just makes it really easy to get in. So I didn't do that, pulling them in. Um, because I'm an idiot. And once we started doing it, I realized that's what we should have done. So what should have been a 20 minute job probably took us in total about an hour. But we did the top ones first, just so it sort of held it. Then we did the one over there because I figured you'd better off doing the one that's awkward first and then come back to this one. Halfway through, uh, Glenn's mate, Nick, who's a helicopter um, licensed lamey, mechanic or engineer, whatever you want to call him. Nick was sitting here and he could see straight back in, looking in this way, that that rear bracket wasn't going to line up. Um, and he said, oh, let's loosen all this off. And me being a complete idiot, do, wanted to prove that I could do it without touching anything on the engine. So we faffed around a bit more on this one, just trying to get that in. And had I pushed these in, um, it would have been really easy. Um, and then once I came around here and looked in there, I could see that Nick was 110% correct. So we just loosened that off and all of this came loose and it was just dead easy to push that through. So that's how I finished it. So if I hadn't have been such a dick, um, we would have got this whole job done in about 20 minutes as it, as it uh, stood. It took us about 45 minutes, maybe an hour to push. I haven't um, talked anything yet, but, but that's the next thing to talk about. Now you're probably not going to be able to see it here, so I won't be able to focus. But that one in there, which everyone considers to be a nightmare, um, really it isn't that difficult. All you need is a spanner like this or a wrench, if, uh, depending on whether you say tomato or tomato, and just slice that off like that. That'll fit in, holds the, bolt, holds the nut, and really uh, pretty straightforward. Just a little bit of faffing just to get it started, but uh, really not that difficult at all. Now another thing is sling, use nylocks. Um, on the engine mounting bolts. Now, if you look at AC4313, um, they say no. And, and as far as I'm concerned, particularly down here, um, over right next to the turbo, which gets extremely hot, and the exhaust, I just don't think it's a good idea having a nylock sitting in there. Um, so when I shortened the bolts, I also drilled them for um, cotter pins split pins depending on which side of the Atlantic you live um, and I got some M10 grade 8 castellated nuts to go on there so after I've torqued them um, I'll just stick the pin in and I'll be happier about that. That one in there will be interesting to get the pin in but I've got a, a plan for that and also a lot more when it comes to that. Now of course if you're going to tighten up um, 
calculated nuts as opposed to nylocks, the torque is going to be different. Now, of course, you get the torque specs out of the maintenance manual, um, and the maintenance manual says that you torque it using oiled um, threads, so we make sure we oil them all up. But, of course, the torque is different. So a nylock nut is known as a prevailing torque nut, and what that means is that due to the nylon in there, um, there's some resistance, so there is prevailing torque before you can actually turn it. So what we need to do in order to, to figure out the correct torque for the for the castellated nut, since we're changing it, is figure out the prevailing torque on the um, nylock nut and subtract that from the figure in the book. Now how do you do that? So there are tables you can get here. We can see that an M10, um, the prevailing torque is 5.25 uh, Newton meters. But the problem with this is, is that if we look down the bottom here, these tables for ISO 2320, which are 50% less than DIN 26715. So they're two different standards. So that's actually just a pain in the backside and I, I don't know what you're supposed to do with that. So the way that uh, is easiest is we just go back to this, um, oil up the threads, start the nut, and then we just get our torque wrench, pop it on the top. I can't show you because I haven't got a, um, a 17 mil socket just at the moment. I'll have that later on today. But you just get your torque wrench, start off really low and slowly dial up the torque until you can actually get it to move. And then that's your prevailing torque. You subtract that from the required torque for the um, castellated nut. And that's what you torque the nuts to. So uh, that's what we'll be doing today. Glenn sat in the thing and um, obviously enjoyed it a lot. I couldn't play him talking because there was music in the background that would have got me a copyright strike. Okay, 564 hours and it's Sunday afternoon. I've had enough for the week. Um, quite a, a good week really considering I got here on Tuesday. It's now Sunday and we've got the engine on. Um, what else will be done? So yeah, the engine's on. Um, haven't talked up the bolts yet. I'll be getting the required tools for that tomorrow. Um, just sort of planning out some of the electrical bits, um, EMS power and uh, starter relay, which I've got sitting in down the bottom there. I've just been doing a little bit more in here. I've still got to tidy this mess up. Um, I've got the, the harness interface connector sitting here for now um, with strain relief, but just want to tidy that up a little bit. Um, it's not too far off actually getting there to the point that um, very soon I'll be able to get this on, just a little bit more wiring to sort out. Also made a very brief start to the fuel hoses. We're just going to go with rubber on the front, everything else inside is hard alloy, but this stuff here, just on the engine, we're just going to stick with the rubber that we've got. The main reason why I didn't go for anything else is because this is our jetted T-piece and I couldn't think of an easy way of actually making that work into um, AN6 connectors without having my lathe around. So um, this will do for now, and in five years' time, we'll either do it again or come up with something different. But for now, that's how it is, and I think it'll be fine. Had a little bit of a mare today because I was just about to wire up the harness interface connectors and realized what the heck was I thinking when I ran the wires for the fuel pump and the lane switches because I just had 20 gauge wire which is no good. Went to great pains to select the right switches but I uh, don't know where my brain was when I ran those wires. But anyway we've sorted all that out. Just another hour in the day. What the heck. Anyhow it's Sunday afternoon. I'm beat so I'm going to go back and just pop this video together and Stick it out online, I don't want it too long anyway. See you later, see you next time.